Come on and bless the name of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Come on. I believe you can do better than that. Would you open up your mouth, not just with the clapping of your hands, but would you come on and begin to speak well of our God? Hallelujah. We love you today, God. You're our everything. Hallelujah. You're our way out. You're our way in. Hallelujah. You are our healer. Hallelujah. You are Jehovah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. We thank you. We love you today, oh God. We, pre we appreciate you, God, yes, for another do. opportunity, yes, God, to Lord. come before your gates. Hallelujah. With thanksgiving, God, and into your courts, God, with praise, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way in the room today, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Receive our worship. Hallelujah. Receive our praise, oh God. Hallelujah. Take joy, God, in what you hear, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We want, God, the more of you today, oh God. Hallelujah. Not like last Sunday, but we need you to move. Hallelujah. We need you to move. Hallelujah. We need a move of God. Hallelujah. We didn't just come. Hallelujah. Because it was Sunday. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I hallelujah. Glory to God. Need a move. Hallelujah. Yes. From you, God. I need a move of God. Hallelujah. Oh, Glory to God. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Pour out your holy fire. Do what only you can do. Hallelujah. Shift this place today, God. Stir us up today, God. Move, God, like never before. Oh, hallelujah. And we'll be so careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We magnify you. We glorify you. We lift you up. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Come on, Zion. Would you help us praise? Come on, I can't hear you. Zion, would you help us worship? Zion, would you help us praise? Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, we bless you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to hallelujah. Glory to God. Sing, let it rise. Hallelujah. Let your glory rise. Let your presence fall. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're the guest of honor. Come on, clap your hands right here. Hey. Oh. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it right there. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the glory of the Lord let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the praises of our King.
the Lord.
Oh, he's a mind regulator. Come on, you ought to just wave your hands. I feel the presence of our king in this room. Somebody wave, 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 wave your hands. Wave your hands. I'm moving. I know this in praise and worship. But praise and worship ain't nothing but testimony service. I said praise and worship ain't nothing but testimony service. We testify of the goodness of our God. Yes, Hallelujah. We testify of the goodness of our King. Hallelujah. Come somebody lift your hands. Lift your hands in the room. Come on, I want to hear you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're not going to stop because the music stopped. I want to hear you bless him. Come on, out of, out of your own mouth, from your belly, come on, bless him. From the place where he kept you, bless him. From the place where he covered you, love him. From the place where he did it like nobody else could, bless him. I'm trying to move, but he's so real, so real, so real. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. 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 I feel his presence in this room. Hallelujah. He is the source of my strength. He is the very strength of my life. Hallelujah, out of the darkness. He brought me. Give me my feet to stand upon a firm foundation. has given my feet to stand up on a sure foundation. Some of the smallest things used to rock me. Some of the smallest things used to, hallelujah, take my focus. Oh, but not now. Told him I'll be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. Where it says, try me, prove me. I know, hallelujah, we use that scripture, hallelujah, when it comes to giving. But he's proven himself to me. Not just with my money, but I found that I could trust him with my life. Woo! I found that I could trust him with my life. With my life. With my life. With my life, with my life, with my life, I worship you. With my life, I, I worship you. Not just with my soul, but with my life.
just a little bit. Come on, say it. You are, you are, yeah. the source of my strength. Sing in 
this house. Come on, sing it again. Say it. I will lift my hand. Because he's never failed me. He's brought me out every single time. I will lift. Yes. Come on, no praise in reserve today. I will live. In total, in total praise to you, to you. Come on, one more time. You are Jesus, the source of our strength. So intentionally, I lift my hands in total praise to you, to you. Hallelujah. Can we do that for just a moment? Can we lift our hands? Hallelujah. And use our voices as an instrument and begin to just release a praise in this house. Come on, family, come on. Use the instrument of your voice, hallelujah. And just begin to fill this house with praises unto the most high God, for the Lord is great, and he is greatly to be praised. That's it, come on, elevate your voice and add some volume to your praise. Yes, Lord, I will bless you. Hallelujah, I will bless you at all times. No matter what's going on, I will honor you, God. I will magnify you, Father. Lord God, because you've been better to me than I've been to my own self. You deserve this praise, God. You deserve this worship. You deserve this honor. Come on, family, open up your mouth and release a shout of praise unto the Most High God. For the Lord is worthy. For the Lord is worthy. For the Lord is worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give him praise. We give him praise. On one accord, we give him praise. Hallelujah. With our hands lifted. Come on, lift those hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dr. Jeff, for just a second, no music. We're going to fill this house with our voices. We're not going to depend on these anointed men of God back here. But come on, open up your voice and give your God praise. That's it. It sounds like victory in here. Come on, praise him. Press on in. Press on in. Come on, tell God how thankful you are. That's it. Tell the Lord how grateful you are. Tell the Lord how you can't live without him. Come on, show your appreciation to him. For it is he that woke you up. It is he that put breath in your body. That's it. Come on, family. Open up your mouth. And then so ultimate. That's it. That's it. For the healer is here. I came with an announcement that the healer has hit this building. The manifestation of the healing power of God is in this house. And on the count of three, I want you to open up your mouth and release a shout and receive not just healing for you, but the healing for every person that is connected to you. The healer is here to heal. One, two, Three shout. The healer is here. The healer is here. I decree in the name of Jesus uh, that every ailment in your body uh, that it shall be healed not tomorrow uh, but today. Somebody shout, I receive it, I receive it. Uh, I receive it, I receive it. Every pain in your body, every discomfort in your body, it's got to flee today because we call upon Jehovah Raphi, the Lord God our healer. The healer is here. The healer is here. The healer is here. He's not just a healer. He is the healer. Every emotional wound, Every emotional scar, the healer is here to heal today. Somebody shout, I receive. That's 
said, I received my healing. You're going to walk up out of here healed today, healed in your mind, healed in your body, healed in your soul. We've been crying out for the healing power of God, and it has been released in this house. For whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And in this house, we loose the healer to heal. We loose the healer to deliver. We loose the deliverer to set free today. Yes, Lord God, for the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, you are healed. 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 By his, come on, say, I. Come on, say it. Come on, say it. That's what's happening today. Say it, I. That's it. This is your decree. When you go to the doctor, what you gonna say? When your children tripping, what you gonna say? When it's something going on and they can't figure it out. Come on, say it one more time. I am. Now shout if you receive it. I receive it, I receive it. I receive it, I receive it. For my mama, I receive it. For my daddy, I receive it. For my children, I receive it. Somebody say, I receive it, I receive it. For my family, I receive it. For my body, I receive it. For my mind, I receive it. For everything connected to me, I receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. One more time, if you receive it, I just want us to release a shout right there. That's it, that's it. This healing, it's yours. The healing you've been believing God for, I came with a prophetic declaration that it is yours. It's not going to happen. It has already happened. Yeah. That's why when we face adversity, we can still press and praise anyway. It's not based on how we feel. It's based on his worth. It's based on his word. Some of us have been praising God in situations where it didn't make no sense. But we look back on it retrospectively. You could say it didn't make sense, but it sure made some miracles. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Can we take just a moment and give God praise for our leaders? our overseers, our founders. Come on, give God praise for the chief, chief apostle Paul L. Beard, the one and only elect lady, Dr. Donna Beard. We thank God so very much. Can help me to give God praise for the best assistant pastors on the planet. Come on, give God praise for pastor and prophet John Trail Hill, Lady Quinetria Hill. We love them and thank God for all of their hard work that they are doing. Can y'all take just a moment and help me give God praise because today is Lady Hill's birthday. Come on, go crazy. That's right. Yeah. She really does work hard. I'm so proud to see her flourish and the things that God is doing in and through her. And the fact that we get to be a part of that to me is such a privilege and such an honor. So I want to challenge all of us in reference to her birthday. Let's all sow something of appreciation seed into her for her birthday is the cash app up there if it's not up there we'll eventually get it put up there but we want her cash app up there because she works hard for the kingdom of God amen she does 
she was on, uh, uh, what do you call it, maternity leave and still trying to work and do stuff because she has you on her heart. She has you on her mind. So let's be a blessing and send her some birthday love to her cash app. Amen? Amen. Amen. Also, can we give God praise? Mom and Dad Beard are in the building. As always, we thank God for them. We love them oh so much. Y'all help me give God praise for the anointed woman of God herself. Come on, give God praise for Minister Keisha Brown Cooley. These anointed minstrels, we thank God for this, this man of, these men of God. Amen. Y'all help me give God praise for what I consider to be the best looking pastor on the planet. Come on, help me give God praise for our senior leader here, Apostle Cordero D. Beard. Thank God so very much for him. At this time, if you would turn your attention to the screen for our announcements. Hey family, I'm Apostle Cordero Beard. And I'm Lady Jessica Beard, and we would like to welcome you to DP Nation Pedal. And we're so very excited about what God is getting ready to do in this place today. So we hope that you are ready because this is about to be an experience like none other. Hey. Can we take just a moment? I want you to give God praise for you. Come on, come on. Amen. We got a chance to honor our leadership. But as leadership, we want to take a chance just to honor you and thank God so much. For those of you, if it's your first time visiting us here at DP Nation Pedal, or if you are a visitor, we want you to just wave your hand at us real big. I see you. I see you. Yes, we praise God for all of our visitors. Can we give God praise for them, DP Nation? Listen, visitors, we know that we already consider you family. You're welcome here into any time. You're wanted here. You're welcomed here. And we thank God so much that you took our time to be with us on this day. All we ask, don't let this be your last time, okay? We're here on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. We're here every Sunday. I'm sorry. Tuesdays at, yeah, at 7 p.m. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Everybody shout, come through. Sundays at 2 that's right, we're always here. So thank you for coming, and all we ask is that you come again. We have just a few announcements that we would like to make on today, and that is, guess what, everybody? It's convocation season. Come on, give God praise for that. Y'all know convocation for us is a very special time. It's always a, a time of outpouring and impartation. This year is going to be phenomenal. Make sure that you're there as much as possible. It's time for us to get plugged in and make sure that we know what our assignments are for a convocation. Those dates are November the 2nd through the 6th. It's going to be in Gulfport, Mississippi, hosted at Empowerment Ministries. And we are excited about what God is going to do during that time. Also, our Thanksgiving giveaway is coming up. We are going to be that's right. We're excited about outreach. We're excited about giving um, our Thanksgiving giveaway. We want you to make sure that you get with Mother Beard. Mother Beard is working on the plan. She is coming up with it. So get with her to find out how you can help because we need donations so that we can be a blessing to our community. Also, don't forget that Noonday Prayer is here every Tuesday from noon to 1 p.m. The building is open and prayer is going forth on this house every Tuesday at noon until 1 p.m. And I mentioned it already, but it's worth mentioning again. Every Tuesday night, we're right here for word study. You know, I told you all before, on Sunday you get the gun, but on Tuesday you get the bullets that go in the gun. Absolutely. And there is a unique anointing upon our word study, so make sure that you are here. 
Also, next Sunday will be our fifth Sunday fellowship. There are some things that are coming up. Stay tuned to all of our social media pages because we will be releasing information throughout the week because next Sunday is going to be a supernatural Sunday. It's going to be a time of fellowship. Get ready. It's going to be really, really good. So like I said, stay tuned to social media for more information about that. Listen, I need all the people that's me, less like me, that like to eat to give God praise. Y'all, come on, we got some cupcakes. We got cupcakes in the back today. Amen. <laughs> we got cupcakes in the back. We're super excited about that because y'all know today is our Awareness Sunday. I know a lot of times the emphasis is on breast cancer as it should be, but we're also uh, making sure that we are aware that this month is also Infant Death and Miscarriage Month, and then it is also Domestic Violence Awareness as well. So we'll get into more information about that. But then also uh, connected to the cupcakes is, as you all see, when you enter the foyer, we got a selfie station. So we want you to make sure before you leave today that you take some pictures and some boomerangs in front of that awesome balloon arch that is out there and post that on social media. Amen? Amen. All right. Those are all of our announcements. So it is giving time in the house today. Can we all the cheerful givers make some noise? Y'all didn't sound too cheerful right there. Let's try it again. All the kingdom millionaires, come on, where are you? Make some noise. There we go. I knew you were in here. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is our time of giving. And we want to challenge everyone to be faithful to the Lord with your giving. This is good fertile ground, as you can see, that we are doing things for the community. We are excited about the faithful givers that God has connected to this house because it allows us to be a blessing to those without and within. So we want you to grab your seeds. For those that are streaming online, this is your time of giving as well. As you can see, the electronic giving methods are there on the screen. You can take advantage of those or a check or a cash. Either way, we want you to give as the Lord purpose in your heart. But we want to make sure that we are faithful when it comes to giving. Oh, that's right. Okay. So visitors, you received a card when you came in. One portion of that card with the, the worship service information on it, that's for you to keep. The other portion of the card, make sure that you put that in the offering bucket, okay? Someone's going to follow up with you. They're not going to get on your nerves, I promise you. <laughs> You're not going to get spam or anything like that. We just want to tell you thank you for making the wise decision to be in this powerful house, and we appreciate you oh so much, all right? Amen. All the givers, come on. You can just come on and come to this offer to the altar and give. If you are an electronic giver, come as well. We want you to just touch the bucket and just and shout increase because that's what God is doing for the givers. Come on, everybody in the house is giving today. Amen. If you need to swipe, if you need a credit or a debit card, if you're giving that way, then you can see Sister Rena right over here to the side. If you have a credit or a debit card, amen, amen, amen. We're excited about giving. Our chief says giving is good because giving is God, amen. That's right. Look at the baby sewing. That's what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so you see, children, that's what I'm talking about, amen. Amen. If you are satisfied with your giving, then in this moment, we will take just a moment and pray over your seed because God is going to bless it. Father, we thank you for those that are giving, those that are sowing in this moment. Father, I pray that you would bless them in the name of Jesus. I decree that every giver that's connected to this house is out of debt. All of their needs are met and that they have plenty more to put in store. Father, I thank you that everything that is connected to them is blessed. I decree increase, overflow, and abundance, that there will be no more dry season, that their broke days are over. And I thank you, Lord God, that they are operating in divine abundance. Father, I thank you so much for what you're doing in and through your people as givers. What an honor and a privilege it is to give. Continue to bless us, and we will continue to sow into this house. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. So everybody shout amen. Amen. The worship team is coming at this time. And then after that, I'll be back up to take us further into the service. Come on, right where you are.
Lord, would you lift your hands? Hallelujah. Glory to God and just acknowledge the presence of our God. Lord, I feel you here. You're in the atmosphere. Your presence is here. I feel you. I'm desperate for you, Lord. I'm thirsty. I need more. I need your power, Lord. I need you. And I feel you moving. I feel you moving.
Say move love. Come on, we're almost done, but you ought to open up your mouth and say it. Come on, if you have any petitions on the altar, say move. I need you to breathe on my family, God. I need you to say my love was I feel you moving. Come on. Move, oh Lord. Move, oh Lord. In me. In me. Oh, I feel, I feel you moving. Oh, I feel, I feel you moving. Can we clap our hands if that's what we really want? If we want the Lord to move on the inside of us, hallelujah. Amen. Listen, we're getting ready in just a moment. We're getting ready to go into our panel and have a discussion. I am a believer that one of the gateways to healing is information. I'm a believer in that, that there are many times when sometimes we're just misinformed. And today is that day where we're getting ready to come into information. Some of you, your eyes are going to be open, and that's going to be the gateway to your healing is when you're able to gain this information that's about to come to you. So listen, I want us to real quickly, I want everybody to stand to your feet for just a moment, if you will, please. And we are going to make sure that we go fellowship. I'm going to give you about a minute or two. I want you to go speak to as many people as you can, but listen. I'm going to give you your prophetic license during this time, and I want you to tell them, say, you are healed. Introduce yourself, meet them, and then make the declaration, say, you are healed. You are healed. That's it. That's it. Amen. That's it. Go meet and love on as many people as you can. And then make the prophetic decree over them that you are healed. Yes, you are. Yes, yes. That's it, that's it, family. Because that's what we are here. We are a family. teaches us to be hospitable one to another. Amen. 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 As we're getting ready to go back to our seats, we are going to get ready to go into this discussion. I want you all to open your ears and to be attentive. We'll spend some time in prayer together. 
at the end, but this panel has some things that I believe is on the inside of them that is going to be an eye opener for us. This is a moment of enlightenment for many of us. And for many of us, this is a gateway to our healing. Because I feel like a lot of times we think we can shout over it, we can dance over it. Come on, somebody, I know I'm telling the truth. We think we can twirl, we think we can touch our neighbor so many times, but a lot of times it comes through information. And so that's what we're going to do in this moment. So get excited. Can y'all give God praise right there if you're excited about this conversation that we are about to have? Amen? Amen. Y'all can take your seats, panel. All right, so I mentioned it earlier, but this is our Awareness Sunday. So there are a lot of things that, that we focus on in this month, but I want us to take just a moment and focus on all of it. There are different areas um, of empowerment that I feel like the Lord is about to give to us. Amen? So I want to take just a moment, and I want to allow, we'll start here and then work our way this way. I want to allow the panel to introduce themselves to you so you'll know who it is that you're getting this information from. And then I want them to just give us some background information and my question for them is what motivates you? What is something that motivates you? And we'll start over here. My name is Daniela Terrell. By education, I am a licensed master's level social worker. Um, I have worked in the social work field for a lot of years. And um, <laughs> um, what motivates you also? Um, I'm just trying to do the work of the Lord. Um, <laughs> that really is what motivates me. Okay. All right. So we'll continue on. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Shaquilla Dollison. I am from Bassfield, Mississippi. I am a three-time alumni of the University of Southern Mississippi. Y'all should have said to the top. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Um, I have an academic background in economics, economic development, and human capital development. Um, my professional background ranges from every, in, anything from higher education to retail. And what motivates me is my son, my mom, and just being able to um, lead a life that somebody else can hopefully learn from. Hello everyone, my name is Tamika Smith. I am from Gulfport, Mississippi. I am a mother of two, a grandmother, yes, grandmother, um, of three. I am um, an educator. I am the owner, well, founder of the Influence Mentorship Program for young ladies. I am also the founder of the Worshiping Warriors Dance Ministry. I'm also a dancer. I am an ordained minister of the gospel. And what motivates me is those, of course, my family, but those that I mentor and those that are connected to me, that they can see something in me that will make them want to do or live right. All right, because y'all give our panel a hand. We've got some qualified individuals who are going to help us out with this conversation today. All right. So I want us to start out with having the conversation in reference to domestic abuse. How many of us, you don't have to answer out loud, and we're not saying that it's you, how many of us know someone, or if you, you know, are in a place where you're okay with saying, I am one of those people, if you fall into either one of those categories in reference to either you've been, you had to deal with domestic violence, or uh, you know someone that has, I want you to raise your hand and kind of, let's see, okay, got you. So actually the majority of us then in some way have been affected by domestic violence, which means that this conversation is very relevant to us, okay? All right, so Danielle, I have a question for you. So I want you to kind of talk to us a little bit about what domestic abuse is and then give us some insight to the abuser. I know a lot of times we do and we should, we should focus on the victim, right everybody? Absolutely. But I want us to, to kind of backdoor it and look at it even from the perspective of the abuser. Like, help us to give a little insight into that side of it as well. So, um, First Lady sent us a long, Lady J sent a long email and I didn't uh, read it all, but let me tell you how good, let me tell you how good God is. I wrote some no cards and it, I got the answer. <laughs> Domestic violence is physical abuse, 
emotional abuse, verbal abuse, financial abuse, and sexual abuse. So if you're in a relationship with someone and they physically lay their hands on you, doesn't matter if they slap you across your face, pull your hair, grab your shirt. That's physical abuse, emotional abuse. You ain't nothing but a, okay. If they tell you that if they're always downing you, you're not gonna be anybody, you ain't nobody without me, you're never going anywhere without me, you need me, you, if you ever leave me, I will, that's emotional. Verbal abuse could be just as much as just down talking you. Um, it goes to what they say to you, you ugly, that's ugly. You fat, you too skinny, you eat too much, you, you're nothing, that's verbal. Financial, give me all your money. You the only one working, you, they take your money. And listen to me, an abuser, don't think it's just me and doing this to women. That's right. Okay, I don't that's want y'all right. to be misconstrued. And then sexual, your body is your body. Your, let me say it again. Your body is your body. You can keep a nickel between your legs if you choose to every night. But it's in the Bible that you know. But your body is your body. Okay. <laughs> Domestic violence causes post-traumatic stress disorder. Post-traumatic stress disorder is like stress or just depression, anxiety, um, substance abuse, or even those suicidal thoughts um, that come related to what someone has said to you. You thinking less of yourself. Um, the main cause of um, domestic violence is mostly a history of being abused or neglected as a child. From a social work perspective, I always say we gotta find the root cause. If you wanna stop doing something, you gotta figure out the root cause of why you did it in the beginning. I had some pretty good note cards. This is the other thing. Post-traumatic stress disorder causes domestic violence. So domestic violence causes post-traumatic stress disorder, but post-traumatic stress disorder causes domestic violence. Um, this occurs when the abuser believes that they are entitled to it or that is acceptable, justified, or unlikely to re be reported. As an abuser, not me, I'm not an abuser. Um, but if I were an abuser, I would want to make my abusee feel less than anything. I would also want them to make it like it's normal. This is normal behavior. It doesn't matter if you leave me, you're gonna get this anywhere you go. This is what you're worth. I'm entitled to your body. I'm entitled to all of your money. I'm entitled to, as an abuser, this is, these are things that um, you will hear the abusers say. This normal behavior, those are the thoughts and the, the, the actions of an abuser. And they put so much fear in you that you're really afraid to tell anyone. Um, for a lot of reasons, you're afraid that if you tell someone, they're gonna harm you, but also that if you tell someone, then they'll laugh at you and it'll make you feel worse. No, no one's gonna believe that I'm, I ever put my hands on you. No one's gonna believe that. Okay, well, I, I, I wanna kinda shift it in reference to like a personal experience, okay? So with Tamika, I know that you have been in a situation where you had to help someone that dealt with domestic violence. You had to kinda be there, be of assistance. And looking back retrospectively with what that individual was going through, the abuse that they were taking, because l listening to what Daniela is saying, the individual that you helped was going through the physical, the verbal, and the emotional. Like, it was abuse on every level. It was pretty severe. And you were there for that person, and you helped them. Looking back at that experience, what's some advice that you could give some of us that may come in the future, come into contact with somebody, or we're dealing with somebody who's going through that right now? Well, the first thing that I learned was I came in with the I'm getting ready to save you and get you out of that situation approach, and that does not work. 
that was the biggest mistake that I made was trying to go in and in, in a sense manipulate them to get out of the situation. Um, I'm not keeping your kids, you can't drive my car. And it was the wrong approach. So what I did learn looking back was to be there, no, I did not support the abuse, but being there um, for the individual, um, letting them be able to express to me what's going on, giving them advice, and also encouraging them, letting them know that you are somebody, you are beautiful, you don't have to take this, but it wasn't until they were ready. I don't care how much we pray or, uh, you know, until they are ready and make a decision to get out of the situation. The, the most important thing that I would say was being there, being there, being available, um, and, and just encouraging them. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I, um looking back at it, because I was kind of, you know, of course, associated as you were going through with it. I, and, and I think that's a real place that you admitted that, that you were trying to force them out of the situation. You know what I'm saying? I think that's honest to say that. It's because you love somebody so much that you don't want to see them with black eyes. You love somebody so much that you can't stand the fact that they be, they're being called Bs and, 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 and Hs by somebody that they're in a relationship with. So it's a hard situation for those of us who may not even be being abused, to even observe the situation, that's a hard place to be. And when you love somebody, of course you wanna pull them out of what you think is an abusive situation to them. But like you said, we can't force them out of it. They're not coming out until they wanna come out. You know, but we can be there and through information and experience from other people, we can learn what can I do to be there for that person. And to piggyback on that, I want Dr. Quila to kind of jump in in reference to, you know, sometimes we stay in these toxic situations, these toxic relationships. Um, I want you to give us some advice in reference to our self-esteem or dealing with insecurities and things keeping us in there. Because a lot of us, some of us may not have been hit before, but we have been in toxic situations before. Some of us forgave. Him forgave her more times than we should, okay? So that's part of the, to, to me, part of it is we can't look down on nobody. It doesn't matter what situation you're in, what you endured, what you went through, we're not going to look down on anybody, okay? We're going to approach it with love and solutions and how we can be there. So Dr. Quila, kind of talk to us in reference to self-esteem, you know, insecurities, and just kind of elaborate on that for us. Okay. Um, when I was presented with that particular question, I thought about it, and what I, the advice that I would give would be, first of all, seek God. Seek God in that. Seek help, and then learn to love yourself for the beautifully unique masterpiece that God created you to be Yes. at the end of the day. Yes. Um, I've dealt with Self, low self-esteem, insecurities, a lot, especially dealing with toxic relationships. Um, and like I said, really and truly getting down to the fact of loving yourself and knowing that you are so much more valuable, um, especially in the eyes of God, than allowing anything outside of that to come into your life or to continuously stay in those type of situations. Um, as Tamika was, as, as she was saying, you know, you truly have to get to a place where, yes, people can do all the praying, they can do all the talking to you that they want to do. You have to make up in your mind and say enough is enough right, right. and get out of it. Right, right. Could y'all clap it up so far if you all are enjoying this time of empowerment? Daniela, you wanted to chime in there? I just wanted to provide um, a resource. So as um, Ms. Tamika said, it is so important that we never tell someone to just leave. Right. You know, in our fleshly, protective friendship, sisterly tone, we always want to say, girl, just leave. Just, just leave him. Boy, just leave, leave her. Don't tell your friend that. It is so dangerous. Um, however, there are resources. The National Domestic Violence Hotline, you can text START, S-T-A-R-T, to 888. 788. So the National Domestic Violence Hotline is, um, all you have to do is text START, S-T-A-R-T, to 8878. And you know what, as you said that, I can remember years ago being at a domestic violence um, event, and there was an individual that was up sharing her testimony 
of domestic violence, and that's one of the things that she told us. She said, in the situation of domestic violence, anytime there's a severe situation like homicide, murder, nine times out of 10, it happens when that individual is trying to leave. So she advised us, she said, never give them the information to just go. There has to be a plan in place. Because nine times out of 10, if that individual is gonna be a victim, a, a, a death type of victim, you know, from domestic violence, it's going to happen when they're leaving. That's why if we're assisting those individuals, there has to be a solid plan in place. And like Daniela just gave us that resource, that information, there are resources that we can use to help those individuals because we want them out, but we want them out alive. Amen? Amen. Okay. Also, um, I want to, so, okay, so that was our, our domestic violence piece. Now we're getting ready to go into, but most people don't know that October is infant death and miscarriage awareness as well. And that is something that we know that people go through and sometimes we don't know how to address it. We don't know how to deal with it. Uh, but in the next few minutes, it is our prayer that this will be an eye opener for us to know how to deal with people who are dealing with that traumatic event. So Daniela is one who has been pretty open and transparent. And I believe transparency is the breeding ground for healing. I believe in transparency. Um, I'm one of those people I have to kind of pull myself back because I feel like my life, part of my life is to share the traumatic events, the things that I've gone through because I've seen and been a witness of the healing power that's connected to transparency. And I want to challenge even some of us that have been through some things that there are some things you went through, but your testimony going to help somebody else. Somebody say amen. I think it's powerful for Minister Keisha to stand up here as anointed as she is, but to tell us that she was dealing with depression. Guess what? There's some of you all who were like, me too, woman of God. I may not have the microphone to share it. Thank you for sharing it because now I don't feel condemned. I, I don't feel like I'm so, like it's something so wrong with me that I'm dealing with life. Life happens. Things are going to happen, right? But what we go through, we go through it with a purpose, and when we come out of it, we can say, God, you get the glory out of what I went through. You get the glory out of my mess ups, my mistakes, whatever it is, God, you get the glory out of it. So we're going to take just a moment to have a conversation to be transparent about dealing with infant death and miscarriage. So, Daniela, I want to open it up and allow you to share um, a portion of your testimony with this experience more statistics, that's that social work instructor part of me. <laughs> one out of four pregnancies ends in miscarriage. One out of every 160 pregnancies ends in stillbirth. Um, numbers and data that's not included in these numbers are infant death from preterm labor, diagnoses of life-limited um, conditions, as well as SIDS. Um, so I was a normal person, you know. Um, and I got pregnant by this fine man. <laughs> and um, during called her husband. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I got papers on him. <laughs> um, <laughs> willingly. Listen, but no, realistically, the Bible says laughter is good for the soul. So, um, and one of my defense mechanisms is humor. Um, but realistically, my first baby I prayed for, um, and I prayed for a girl, but I got a boy. God knows best. Um, <laughs> but I prayed for a um, healthy baby not to be pregnant during the summertime, and I prayed for natural birth. God gave me all of that at 28 weeks. Um, I did not think it was necessary to pray for full-term labor, but the Bible says be specific, okay, um, in, in so many words. Um, so I was nervous after having a baby at 28 weeks to get pregnant again and have um, another baby. So I took a pill regularly. W one day I forgot. <laughs> Actually, I ran out of my prescription. It happens, huh, Lady Hill? <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Some of the 
things that I remember the most are the things that I've laughed about throughout life. And so this is one of the things that kind of kneels de- near and dear to my heart. But I did. I ran out of my pills, and it just so happened on, a, on the weekend. And so by the time they called in the prescription, it was too late. Bam. <laughs> okay. So I find out that I'm pregnant. And, you know, my husband is a different type of man. I'm like, it was, I knew I was pregnant before I found out I was pregnant. And so January the 1st, we took a test. And the test said, you're pregnant. So I was like, hey, babe, well, I'm pregnant. He was like, happy new year. (laughs) (laughs) So here we are. The Christmas tree hadn't been taken down. Baby, I can't lift up nothing. I had already had a, a, a preterm labor, um, and my baby is perfectly fine, FYI. Um, but I wasn't lifting nothing. I wasn't cooking nothing. I wasn't doing much of anything, you know, hard labor. Um, and I went to the restroom. We, we did this for a few weeks. He took down the tree. He, did, he cleaned. He, I think that's what started it all. And I went to the restroom one day and there was blood, I freaked out. I called my nurse practitioner. I was like, I, am I supposed to be bleeding like this? She was like, um, we need to get you in here to see me. Of course, everything happens on the weekend or before the office is open. Um, and so that was that morning. She says, hey, run through here this afternoon. I went by and saw her. She put me on a um, medication. She was like, hey, you need to get in with your OB. Got in with my OB. I'll tell you, it was Dr. Holland. Um, Having a good doctor is probably the best thing to have during a process like this. Um, Dr. Holland is old, 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 and he was so wise, but it was so funny because he says, Daniel, you're not pregnant. They had taken a urine test. He says, you're not pregnant. I said, well, I took a test at home. It says you're pregnant. So he said, well, we're going to have to do a blood test. Lo and behold, they took a blood test. He says, hmm, you're pregnant. So I don't like needles any more than, um, I don't like needles. I won't give y'all the analysis, but I don't like needles. Um, And so he said, well, you'll have to come back in a few days and we'll draw blood again. So that's what we did. We went through that process for about a month. And I'm going to take a little interjection. Please stop asking people when you're going to have another baby if you don't know their story. Girl, when you going to have another one? You don't know what I went through with the last one. I didn't think that I would. I could be as strong going through pregnancy because I woke up one morning and had a baby at 28 weeks. And so I just was good with just the one and doing what I was doing in the Bible. Um, And so, um, yeah, I was going two to three times a week and they were drawing my blood. The nursing staff at the clinic were not the sweetest. I always prayed that my lab tech was the good one that drew blood easily. However, this went on for about three weeks. Um, soon we got far along, or far enough along to where they could do an ultrasound. Um, and I think this is the first day that I actually cried. Um, so going through the process, they were drawing my blood. I would always take my baby with me. Um, this particular day, my baby and my husband with, with, went with me. Because I told him he, of course, wanted to be there with me, but I didn't want him taking off work. I was going to get my blood drawn two to three days out of the week, and I didn't want him to take that time off of work. And so we went, and we um, had our ultrasound, and they didn't see anything. They didn't see it in my tubes. They didn't see it. He was like, well, we see that. We see that, but we don't see. It was very difficult. And then the communication in the clinic. We go out, and, you know, you have to see the lady about the money. She said, well, I think we should talk about, you know, a payment plan for when you have the baby. Oh, God, I broke down then. Because by this time, no one had told her it's not looking too good for her. Well, we were just going to go through the process, you know, see what happens. Because my titer was going up. I don't know if you all know about titer. Um, It has to be a certain level in order to show that you're pregnant. But every time I went and got my blood drawn, which is why they kept going through the process, my titer would continue to go up. It would continue to go up. So it was was something to know. Um, Long story short, we had gone about at this point, about 10, 16 weeks, and it just wasn't going up enough. And so he says, well, Daniela, we really need to do a DNC. He says, I feel like you have lost the baby, 
And at this point, you're just showing signs that a baby was there. Another breakdown point, my baby says, mom, did something bite you? Um, I cried like, oh my gosh. However, um, when we got to Force Journal to have the whole procedure, the staff was nice. I didn't talk about this process and my time of crying was so small in the public eye that my family was nervous. They weren't texting me, they were texting my husband. And you just have to know my husband to know that he don't do people like that. And so they were texting him to check in on me. But the one thing that I will tell you, and, and I knew it was a God thing throughout the process, I'm one who believes that I can't minister to you if I've never gone through it myself. And so that was one of the hard parts of my journey um, that I went through, but I know that I went through it so that I could help someone else. But I also know that I can still carry. Um, I, 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 can, I can still carry. And so um, it was a very difficult time for me. Um, now when people say, girl, we ain't gonna have another baby. Well, you know, it was kind of difficult the last time we had one. It was a miscarriage. I'm, I'm petty like that, but I like to make them feel really bad because you have gotta stop asking people that question if you don't know them. Um, mind your uterus. That's what I, I saw a post on social media that said, mind your uterus. Don't worry about somebody else's, but mind yours. Because like she said, you don't know what that individual has been through. So let me ask you this, Daniela. So with, did you feel as if you went through a grieving period after this? And, and, and make it quick, then I'm gonna jump back in also. I had a lot of time to grieve. Um, my husband was very supportive. It brought us together um, in our marriage, but I'm a social worker, so I had I, I did all that I could, and I knew that, well, I didn't do nothing, so, I mean, you know. So I just said, well, God, God whatever you have for me, I'm ready. And then I get a little nervous when I say that. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, and I am, y'all know I've shared it here before, that me and Apostle went through a miscarriage. I didn't even think that I could get pregnant. Did not think that it was a possibility at all. Dealt with infertility in my 20s, and now I'm, you know, a little bit older, praise God. You know, but, <laughs> but now, you know, to have gone through that, because for me, it was like, Lord, I didn't ask you for that. Why am I going through this? You know, and, and, and it's also like, there is a grieving process that takes place and it's weird, and a lot of people don't understand it, because you're grieving for somebody that you haven't met yet. Mm -hmm. And though they haven't met that individual yet, it's still an individual. It's still somebody mentally, emotionally, spiritually. You start, it, it's a part of you. You start preparing for that as soon as you know. And so when there is a loss, that's why she said, you got to be careful always asking people, when do you have another baby? When do you have another baby? What if they just lost a baby? And now you're triggering what they went through. You know, so we have to be careful with those types of statements and everything because it is a real loss. It is something traumatic to go through. I thank God for my husband because my husband held me and let me cry because I was crying not only for the baby that we lost. I also was crying because for me, it brought up all of my feelings of insecurity. It made me feel like less than a woman, you know, and so there were a lot of individuals. There are some people I know I could on my hand that are dealing with uh, infertility, and I'm believing God for it. I'm believing God that God is gonna bless these young couples that I know they're married, they're gonna be perfect parents, they're gonna be the most amazing parents. So now I feel like part of my assignment because of what I went through is to pray for them and to be of hope to them, to be a testimony to them that you don't have to give up, you don't have to throw in the towel, that it is a traumatic event, it is hard to go through, a lot of people may not understand the grief that the grief that is connected to it, but there is healing that comes from it as well. I know it was helpful to me to have conversations with individuals who had gone through it and to be able to talk to them about it or get you know their side of it. It was helpful to me. So I look at it like that. Is if I went through it, I went through it for a reason. Because apparently it's gonna turn around and be a blessing to someone else. Amen? Amen. Okay. So we, what do we learn from that segment is we're going to mind our own business about when other people have their babies. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> but also we're going to be sympathetic and we're going to be prayerful and help those individuals as much as we can because it is a traumatic event 
that is connected to grief, okay? And then also, I want to say this as well, because there's uh, some people sometimes, they be like, they ought to be over there by now. No, you don't know that. You don't know what they went through with that situation. You know, I know an individual now who is grieving a loss of a, of a baby, and every time that year, they're dealing with it. I'm not going to tell them you ought to be over there by now. You know, because I, I didn't, my situation wasn't as traumatic as hers was. So sometimes we got to insert extreme love, and the Bible talks about long suffering. And sometimes we got to suffer along with people. Amen, everybody. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Just a little tidbit. We don't know the loss that someone else has had in other aspects of their life. And so to lose a child in the aspect of a miscarriage, it could be a continual cycle of insecurity Amen. about myself. I'm not good enough. I did something wrong. When I had a premature baby, that was the one thing that I did. I recycled um, back everything that I had done the first seven months. What did I do wrong? I remember falling one time um, running because I worked out. Um, and so what did I do wrong? And that is the same thing that happens during a miscarriage. I am fortunate enough I didn't do anything. And so... It was a, I lost something, but I gained a lot of peace because the Lord reminded me that I can do it again. You know, I, I thought that there was something wrong with me is why I had a, a premature baby. I had a healthy pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And so I thought there was something wrong with me. So to be able to have another baby, the Lord said, hey, there's really not much wrong with you. Um, it just happened. And so that was where the grief was easy for me. Because it was, it's just knowing the statistics, one out of four, it happens. Right. Um, but when you bring up that, your fault. right, when you bring up that, when's the next time, and that grief for that person, there are people who've had multiple miscarriages. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes a, a thing about me. There is something wrong with me. Not the, my body makeup, it's me. Right. And, and that's a different conversation, but we deal with it. Right, right. Y'all clap your hands for that segment. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to move into a segment where we're actually having a conversation about cancer. So one more time, we're going to do a brief poll. How many of us, if it wasn't us, we were connected or know someone who has dealt with cancer? That's the majority of us that have been affected by it. Once again, hence this being a relevant uh, time of empowerment and conversation for us to have. So, um, Dr. Quila is going to share. I am so proud of what God has done in and through her. I've, we've been around each other for a long time, for years. Y'all know this is one of my daughters. And uh, to watch her go through her process, to me, gave me so much hope and so much faith in the power of God. To watch her resilience and how she dealt with it, it really blessed my whole entire life. So I want us to tune in, and she's going to share with us some information in reference to how it is that she walked through this process of dealing with cancer. Um, so this is kind of like the first time publicly that I'm really talking about this. Come on, y'all clap your hands. <laughs> this is our first time sharing this. This is powerful. Um, I've did it in a couple of BOK segments or whatever, but it's, it's really been very, very low-key purposefully. Um, and when I spoke to my mom about even talking about this, she was like, I think it's time yeah. that you talk about it. So 2018, March 2018, my divorce was finalized. By October 2018, um, a day at work, normal day at work, but I had began to have excruciating pain in my abdomen, lower abdomen, um, to the point where I couldn't even stand up straight. If I would move a certain way, like the pain would just cut through and I, I would just literally be in tears. By the time I made it to the ER, I was on the table and was scrunched up like a baby. I could not move, didn't know what was going on. This is the worst pain I've ever felt. That wasn't even um, childbirth pain or nothing could compare to that type of pain. Me not thinking nothing serious about it. Um, by the time the doctor's report came back, this is, you know, preliminary report, they saw a mass. I'm like, what you talking about, a mass? You know, up until this point, I've been healthy. Um, well, we'll have to send you to your main doctor to see what's going on. So I go to the main doctor. They was like, okay, we can't really tell what it is. 
We just know it's something there. We're going to do what we call a procedure laparoscopy. I said, okay. Um, they explained to me what that was. You know, they just make a little incision next to my navel, go in, take a, you know, a piece of it, and, you know, do some, run some tests on it. Well, I go in for what I was thinking was going to be a minor outpatient type deal. I get back there, and, of course, um, they ran into some issues. Um, afterwards, my mom came out, you know, by the time I did recover from everything um, that same day, and she was like, yes, the doctor came out and told me, like, we see something worse. Like, we need to do major surgery. This is not going to be an outpatient type deal. And, of course, my mom lost it at that point and literally called the whole family in. Um, what they found was a, what they call a GIST. It's a gastrointestinal stroma tumor. It was almost the size of, I guess, a tennis ball or something like that. But my lower intestines was wrapped around it. Um, to prevent further surgery, which was going to mean even longer recovery than what they did, they literally just unraveled the tumor from around my intestines, left my intestines intact, and scraped where the tumor was actually connected to the intestines, which means that yeah, there's a possibility that you could have left some there, which was the reason why my, when my test came back, you know, it said positive margin. At that point, I'm thinking, okay, positive margin. I mean, did you leave something in there? Are you saying that you got everything? Um, upon, upon further review, I found out that positive margins means, yes, you, you know, cancer was present. I don't like to say that word. Um, I have a little history on that, dealing with my maternal grandmother, and the doctor wanted to say that she had cancer. She never, ever claimed cancer in her life. She took the medical doctors, um, their precautionary methods. She took the medication, of course. They took all her hair out, all of this, but her death certificate actually says congestive heart failure. It does not say cancer, and she believed that up until the day she so I felt the same way, like, nope, I'm not going to believe that about myself. Yeah, I see what that paperwork says, but I'm not believing that. I will do the precautionary method that you are telling me to do, um, but I'm still praying and seeking God for healing, complete and total healing over there, because I just couldn't believe that to be absolutely true. And then I had someone to even come back um, dealing with the medical field and tell me that, if that was cancer, it would have been killed you by now. So that was just so interesting to me. One more point that I was like, okay, I hear what you said, but they got my stuff mixed up with somebody else. That <laughs> it's not dealing with me. Um, but dealing with that, um, I mean, at the end of the day, you wouldn't know that unless I just came out and told you. You wouldn't know that I have to go to the doctor every three to six months to have ink injected into my system to make sure that nothing is growing, that there's nothing there. And I'm one, like I said, I'm a researcher. So I go back and look over what the doc, I may not understand it, but Google is a really trusted friend to me. I go back and Google that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I go back and Google it, but then I also ask questions because you can't always trust Google. Google will have you in some places, have your mind That's just true. straight up messed up. But I do go back and what I find, I ask questions about it to try to get a bit more understanding of what's really going on. So when I do go into the doctor's office, I, he ain't just telling me what's going on. I'm having questions. I'm asking questions about my test results. Like, what does this mean? Yeah, you're telling me everything is okay. Well, what does this mean? I saw this on here. But um, so I just had um, everything just came back fine from my last um, testing that I had done, my CT scan and everything like that. So he told me, he's like, okay, from three months now, we're going to push it out to six months now because you're still doing so well. Well, I told him, I was like, look, we got to get to a point where I don't see myself living on these pills for the rest of my life right. every right. single day. I'm like, this is a 400 milligram pill that, yeah, if I don't eat enough, I get sick to my stomach. Um, and I just don't see doing life like this. I have a child that is my everything. I want to be here to see him and all of this good stuff. So... You know, the, he said three to five years. So at my three-year mark, I went back and I was like, okay, everything's been good. Like, we haven't had anything, no, no problems. We had a little hiccup here, but everything was fine. 
it hurt me so bad that he said, I don't want to rock the boat right now. He was like, everything is, we've been doing really good. It's only been three years. I just don't want to rock the boat. So, of course, I went back to one of my other doctors, and they told me the same thing. Let's not rock the boat right now. I said, so what? We're going to give it another two years? I said, I'll give you five. I'll give you five years. After that, I don't know. We're going to have to figure out some stuff. But I had a coworker at that time that came to me, and she was very, because I was devastated. I was like, I want to get off this medication. I'm like, this is a, I don't, I don't feel I have this. I said, this is a leukemia pill. This is what leukemia patients take. I don't want to take this anymore. I said, I'm worried about the ramifications of taking it for an extended period of time. Also going and have ink injected in my body every three to six months. What are the ramifications of this? I'm like, the doctor's not going to tell me that information. I said, but I know it can't be good. She was like, I understand what you're saying. She's like, but at the end of the day, you pray about it, you go whichever direction you choose, because at the end of the day, it, the choice is yours. And all I could think about was what my grandmother, you know, her decision. And my aunt came back and told me the exact same thing. She said, your grandmother never, ever believed that she had cancer. She said she just took the medication just because to settle her kids' nerves and everything else like that. She's like, at the end of the day, the choice is yours. If you want to give it two more years on the medication, do that. But at the end of the day, the choice is yours, and we're believing God for full and total healing. That's right. Y'all right. know, one point that I wanted to point out in reference to what she said is that I, I am a firm believer in finding out the facts and then speaking truth to the facts. Y'all hear me what I'm saying? So she said, I hear what y'all saying about this diagnosis. I get that. But I'm going to speak truth to it, right? I'm going to speak by his stripes we are healed to it. You know, I, I'm going to go to the doctor like I'm supposed to because a lot of times our healing, that, that form of healing, it just might come through medication. My mom always say the, doctor, the Lord gave these doctors this sense for a reason. So we should be okay with getting our checkups. We should be okay with, you know, doing these different things because you just never, ever know. That may be the avenue that the Lord uses to heal you. It may be through the doctors. It may be through the medication. So she could have just went in and said, no, I'm not doing nothing. I don't want surgery. I'm not taking anything. But one of the ways that the Lord chose to heal her was through medical intervention. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Somebody say amen. Amen. Okay, we got one more. Uh, uh, um, I want Dr. Uh, I almost said doctor. Come on, woman of God. Let me prophesy over her life real quick then. Okay? <laughs> Prophetess Tomika, I want you to share with us your encounter when you faced cancer. Um, I think I kind of gave a quick testimony, but my the cancer that I faced was uh, leukemia, which is the blood a uh, blood cancer, and um, the initial I think the worst part of it was the initial diagnosis. Mm. You telling me that I have something that could literally take my life? I think it was the the initial diagnosis. I, I can remember coming out of the doctor's office, and I think I called Lady J, and I, she probably couldn't understand a word that I was saying because I was like, I know I can't die like this. And so that was one of the things um, that I didn't tell a lot of people because I didn't want anybody to feel sorry for me. I, I didn't want anybody to treat me as if I was dying because my declaration that was I was going to live and not die. That's I was it. like, um, uh, I used to say, well, not used to say, I say all the time, and you know, when people die, I was like, I'm not, go I ain't going anywhere, I'm going to be right here. And so during that time, that was what I was saying. It was frustrating having to go to the doctor all the time, being poked and, and having blood taken, and you sitting there looking at them taking 10 to 12 tubes of blood literally every time you go to the doctor, and it's not, it's, and I was going at least once a week because it was kind of moving rapidly. Um, and the way they found out is that I was having... I would just get bruises and I was really tired, but the thing that trick made me actually go to the doctor is I was getting bruises on my body and I didn't know where they were coming from and they began to become larger. And so once they found out, it took a little, little few tests, a few months, well, it wasn't a month, but it took a few tests to find out. I had to go through several tests um, and the tests were not always comfortable. And, um, well, once I went through that, we did um, prayer and I was like, God, I can't die like this. I have children. I can't die now, wait, like this. Now, I want this. you to elaborate just a little bit on the prayer portion, okay? 
I want you to tell them about, just, just, just elaborate a little bit on that prayer, because that's the point that I want to point out in reference to your story. Okay, okay. when I found out, I told, um, of course, you know, Lady J has the DOK power, Empowerment uh, Mentorship, and so I told the ladies in the mentorship, I was like, listen, I was afraid to tell, I don't know why I was afraid, but I was afraid to tell them, and I was like, um, one of them was like, well, this is what we're getting ready to do. And so we all got together, and we went on a 30-day fast. I'm so, I was really, probably shouldn't have did absolute for a couple of days, but I was doing absolute. So we put together a schedule, and they prayed with me, um, and we did this for 30 days straight, continually going to the doctor. And the crazy thing is, when I went back to the doctor after those 30 days, the thing, it, it wasn't, it, nothing had happened. It was still the same. And that was devastating at that particular time. And my, um, the best part was my doctor was saved. Mm -hmm. And I spoke with her and I was like, can you please just give me 30 more days before we do anything else? I didn't want to be cut on again. I didn't, want any, I didn't want any more tests. I didn't want anything. And she said, I'll give you 30 more days. So we did it again for uh, another 30 days. We did the fast and we did the praying and I just started decreeing. I had things on my mirror. I had notes on my steering wheel. So when I got in the car, I looked at post-its that I am healed. And when I washed and brushed my teeth and washed my face, I looked at post-its and I began to declare those over my life. And I kept telling myself, you cannot die like this. You will not die like this. And within that last set of, uh, the last 30 days, God healed me do a miracle and the doctor when we went to the doctor they actually did two tests because she wanted to make sure what she saw the first time and compare it to what she saw the sixth time the Boy. second time and she said to me she said I don't know if it's the miracle you've been praying for or if we mixed diagnosed you but I don't see what we saw in the beginning <laughs> And it was just, it was, it was just such a relief. Now that's when I had to broke down, y'all. They had to wheel me out of the doctor's office <laughs> in a wheelchair. <laughs> they wheeled Tell me. Tell them how out you tore to that stage car. up at church. Tell them that part too. Oh no, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> she left that out. They had to go catch they, on stage. They literally had to call the little hostess to wheel me to my car because <laughs> I was tore up. I was, I was, thank you, Jesus. And my doctor, she just began to tell God, thank you. So it's, it's having a great doctor definitely is, is a plus when you're going through something traumatic. But I just appreciate God um, for just being a healer. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and that's the point that I wanted to point out with her, is that the Lord healed Quila through medical intervention. He healed Mika with a supernatural intervention. So whatever avenue God chooses to use, at the end of the day, he is the healer. Come on, somebody. When I tell you, listen, I, that they built their faith up. All of them got together and spent that time in prayer together. And so when she told me what the doctor said, the doctor said either we, and it was stage what? Stage two. They had diagnosed her with stage two. But they told her, they said, the doctor said, either this is the miracle that you prayed for or we misdiagnosed you. They didn't misdiagnose stage two. Hello, somebody. They did not misdiagnose stage two. But what happened is God intervened and God healed her of something that was possibly going to kill her. Y'all don't know when to shout. I'm trying to tell you. Listen, the panel is over. Let me tell you something. I am a believer that if God can heal yesterday, he can heal again today. I came today to decree and declare in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord, that even in, whether it's you that's dealing with cancer or whether it's somebody that's connected to you that's dealing with cancer, Answer, that the Lord himself is going to touch either through medical intervention or through a miracle however he chooses to do it that God is going to heal now I want you to give God praise right there for the healing uh-huh I decree it to be so in the name of Jesus yes, Lord God that by your stripes we are healed hallelujah that God is still a miracle worker if God I did it for Tamika, if God did it for Quila, if God healed uh, Daniela out of all of the traumatic stuff that she went through, that is the same God that is touching and healing you right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost right through here. Yes, Lord. That, that a lot of us have had to face different traumatic events, have lost different things.
life, but I came with some good news for every praiser in this house today, that today is your day of healing in the name of Jesus. It ain't always got to be all on your head. Come on, somebody. The Lord is so great. He said, don't limit me to somebody just laying hands on you. I can take a panel, and while the panel is giving information, I can touch you and heal you. I can touch and heal your family members. Come on, somebody. Yeah, today we're not receiving healing just for ourselves. We're receiving healing for every person that is connected to us. I decree and declare the healing power of God. I decree and declare that every muscle, every tissue, every joint, every cell in your body is covered under the blood of Jesus. I decree divine healing now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord God. Sister Renetta, even your knees that you've been dealing with, I decree and declare a supernatural healing to take place yes lord god where the range of motion it is coming back to your knees it is going to be a testimony of the power and the goodness of god come on somebody and celebrate in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah that we are a people that will trust god yeah uh-huh we we take the facts but then we speak truth to the facts. And God is so powerful. I believe that today, not only is he healing physical bodies, but God is healing you emotionally as well. For all the stuff that you went through. Some of us got some trauma that happened in our childhood that pops up every once in a while. Well, I decree and declare that you are healed by the power and the blood of Jesus. Somebody shout, I receive it. There are some of us in here today, you may not tell your story of abuse that you went through in that relationship, but I came to let you know that you are healed in the name of Jesus. Every generational curse over your life is broken now. It won't go to your children. It will not go to your grandchildren. Come on, somebody, and shout, I receive. Yeah. The Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord God, our healer. And yes, he is healing our physical bodies, but he is healing our souls as well. That we won't be individuals that are nasty to people because of what we went through. We won't be individuals that walk around with a nasty disposition. And some of us don't know that's that stuff that's coming up from the past. All that that you went through, you got to be real and drop the pride and say, Father, I'm now realizing that my childhood has the effect on what I'm dealing with right now. God, I drop the pride and say, Father, I, I, I admit that that relationship, that toxic, unhealthy relationship that I went through is affecting my marriage now. We got to drop the pride. Some of us can't make relationships work because of some of the trauma that we went through in our past. Come on. But I came today to decree in the name of Jesus that the great and mighty healer is touching you down to your soul. Made your soul. The soul, it keeps record of things. But today the Holy Ghost is like an eraser. It's erasing that pain like it never happened. It's erasing that trauma like it never happened. In the name of Jesus. It is so. And it shall not be otherwise. Hallelujah. Come on everybody, lift your hands right there. I'm going to give you a few minutes. I want you to have a real conversation with the Lord. It's just you and him. Because a lot of us saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking, and still have things in us that need to be healed. Hallelujah. So in this moment, we drop the pride, we drop our title, whatever it is, and we have a real conversation with God that the things that I went through, it will no longer affect me. The things that I faced, that God, I'm allowing you to cleanse me and to heal me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you are Jehovah Raphi. You are the Lord God, our healer. Father, as I look around in this room, I see individuals that have faced traumatic events, lost loved ones, and still haven't healed from it. 
And I decree and declare, Lord God, that you're touching them in the place they hurt. Touch them, Lord God, in the places there are some things they've never told anyone. Touch them there, in that place, God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that place that still hurts, that place that is negatively affecting their present and has the potential to negatively influence their future. I decree healing in the name of Jesus. I decree wholeness in the name of Jesus. Father, I tell you, thank you. There are people under the sound of my voice that after today, they will seek out therapy. Hallelujah, Lord God. Because, Father, you can use any avenue to heal us. And so we lay our pride down and we say thank you even now, Lord God. Hallelujah. If it be through therapy and spe speaking to a therapist, then we give you permission to heal us via that route. If it, Whether it's a medical intervention or it's a supernatural intervention, whatever it is, God, we thank you today that your healing power is here and it is touching us. Father, now we don't even want to be selfish in this moment. Not only are we asking you to heal us, there are some things that our parents had to face that they don't even know they need healing from. But we intercede on their behalf right now. Father, we, must, we speak to our maternal bloodline in the name of Jesus. And we say that every generational curse, we call you up and out now in Jesus' name. We speak to our paternal bloodline. And we say every generational curse, up and out now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we tell you thank you that there are new generational patterns that are being developed. There are new generational blessings that are being released to us. And we thank you now, Lord God, that Father, we will constantly, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, we will constantly seek after you and thank you for your your healing power for you are the same God yesterday today and forevermore yes Lord God you are the healer and we thank you that after this day that there are testimonies that shall come forth there are testimonies where people will be able to run back and say thank you for that information because you healed me God thank you for that time of empowerment because you healed me father Lord God let the testimonies fall amongst your people I decree and declare even before we go into thanksgiving giving. We give you thanks now because this is our season of testimony. Father, every person under the sound of my voice before December the 31st 2022, Father manifest miracles amongst them. Lord God, release your signs. Lord God, release your wonders. Do it for your people, Lord God. Father, your word tells us, those that diligently seek after you, that you will reward them. Reward their seek. Reward their their seek, reward their pursuit after you, Lord God. We thank you for it now. We thank you for it. We receive your healing. We receive your wholeness. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. All the free people, come on, release a free praise. That's it. Y'all sound like freedom in the house today. All of the free people release a free shout. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Not only are we free, everything that's connected to us is free. It is so in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We want to take just a moment. If you would, please, every eye closed, every head bowed for just a moment. We want to take a moment and make sure that we extend the offer to you to receive Christ into your life and into your heart today. Everything that we said means absolutely nothing if Jesus is not a part of the equation. Because all of this healing that we're accessing today, it is through the blood of Jesus. So if you're an individual who say, you know what, Lady J, I ain't playing no more. I have got to give my heart to Christ and I have to do it right away. If that's you, I want you to lift your hand real high so that I can see you. Or if you're an individual who says, you know what, I really had a real tight relationship with the Lord at one time, but now it's not there like it needs to be, and I want to recommit myself to the Lord today. If you fall into that category, come on, lift your hand real high so that we can see you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I see you. Hallelujah. Or if you're an individual that says, you know what? This is a good house right here. It's apostolic, it's prophetic, and I can get some good information. I can grow here. I can guarantee you 
that this is the place that you can grow and you can go out into the world and conquer because of the empowerment that you receive in this house. If you're a person who says, I want to connect to this house, we don't call you members, we call you disciples. If you say, I want to be one of the DP disciples, I want you to lift your hand real big so that we can see you in this house today. Amen. 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 If you fall into either one of those categories, if you would, would you come meet me at this altar real quickly? If you lifted your hand, I want to invite you to come. Amen. God bless you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. That's it. Come on. Come on. Amen. Can we give God praise for these souls today? Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. We give God praise so much for them. Amen. If you would. Amen. Can we give God praise that these individuals were bold enough to say, I want to be closer to God. Come on. Come on. Come on. They say, I want more of him. Can we all be like that to where we want more of God? I ain't talking about a house. I'm not talking about a spouse. I'm not talking about money. So we have people at the altar say, I just want more of God. Come on, release a praise if you are in your seat, but you fall into that category. They were just bold enough to step out and say it. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for these, your women of God today. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that they are covered under the blood of Jesus. I decree and declare no weapon that is formed against them would ever be able to prosper. Father, I tell you, thank you that they have a desire to be closer to you and to have a closer walk with you. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would wrap your arms around them. I pray throughout the week that they would see you. I pray throughout the week that they would hear you. I pray throughout the week, Lord God, that the weeks that are to come, that they would say, I made the right decision on that day to say, I want a closer walk with the Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in and through them, even their surroundings. Bless their surroundings. Put them in an atmosphere that is conducive for their growth in the name of Jesus. I tell you, thank you, Lord God. We appreciate you for them. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Everybody say amen. Come on, shout amen. Amen. It is so. Listen, I want you all, you three, that's Sister Taquana right there with that blue jean jacket on. She waving at you. I just want you to give her some information just so we can follow up with you, okay? Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise for these women of God. Amen. Amen. Amen, family. We get ready to be dismissed. Has it been a good Sunday for you all? Yes, yes. Remember, Apostle told us that we are going to do church, but we're not going to be typical all the time. That there are going to be some changes, and there are going to be some things that are unique that we are going to do um, in this house. So today was...